Welcome in to Bears Weekly, powered by IGS Energy, a Chicago Bears network production. Bears Weekly is brought to you by Advocate Healthcare, Athletic Physical Therapy, CDW, Connie's Pizza, IGS Energy, and Miller Light. Here are your hosts, Jeff Joniak, a.k.a. the Mayor of Bearsville, and his sidekick, Tom the Surfmaster Thayer. Well, it's been quite the expedition for the Bears in 2024, starting with an early opening at training camp for an appearance in the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio, and the enshrinements of Steve McMichael and Devin Hester, to the franchise appearing for the first time in Hard Knocks, and now to the London Games for 2024 and a second trip to Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in a Sunday matchup with the Jacksonville Jaguars. How are we doing, everybody? This is Bears Weekly on ESPN 1000 and the Bears Radio Network with Super Bowl-winning Bears guard Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak in the ESPN studio, spinning the dials tonight, Charlie Bevins. And thanks to our producers, Dan Brilli and Jordan Treadup from the Bears, and the executive producer of the Bears Radio Network is Eric Ostrowski. It's been a global spotlight for this Bears team, uh, frankly, ever since they landed the number one overall pick in the April draft. Tom, and the selection of quarterback Caleb Williams out of USC. And, and frankly, it's a team embracing the attention and handling it all in a very positive way as they have from Canton here to London. You know, I like the fact that we always talk about the reset in an NFL season. When you describe everything that's gone on this football season and how exhausting it's been, where they played, what they played for, who now is aboard the Chicago Bears, when you have a chance to come to a location like this and almost reset the training camp vibe, it's only the team, it's only the staff. That's what they're staying prepared for. I expect a big performance out of them on Sunday, but the Bears have accepted every one of those responsibilities that you've talked about very maturely, and they've gotten better along the way. And coming up in tonight's program, we visit Bears linebacker Tremaine Edmonds on his London experience. Uh, sit down with Bears president and CEO Kevin Warren. A brief visit with Bears chairman George Hallis McCaskey. Also the coordinators uh, speaking today at Hallis. Oh, Tom, let's hit the injury report, though. Uh, Tevin Jenkins listed uh, on Wednesday as limited. Uh, that ankle then downgraded to no practice uh, today. You know, and it's a good thing that it just hasn't been announced today that Tevin Jenkins can possibly not play in the game, where they've had an opportunity to look at Bill Murray and his strengths and concerns and the things he has to get better at. I was really encouraged by what I saw out of Bill Murray, and I don't expect the offensive line to slip at all. And thankfully, Matt Pryor has stepped up to the job like a mature veteran he is. In Shaden Waldron, he kind of is a, has a better feel for Caleb, a better understanding about how he's growing at the line of scrimmage, and I think all those things will match up together. Tyreek Stevenson, uh, calf injury, he was limited, and Kyler Gordon, uh, full participant, he was dealing with a heel injury. But, again, there will be no Jaquan Brisker. Right. I don't expect the defense to slip, and I would hope that a lot of the – guys in the background waiting for their opportunity, waiting till their number is called to go in and play a whole game or just play a portion of a game, that they live up to the expectations and the requirements of every other guy on this defense is set for them that are, are playing on the field. And then each position coach will have these guys properly prepared in order to go out there and intelligently play a game. Then it's up to them to play it fundamentally correct. Also defensive lineman Zach Pickens still working through that groin injury and defensive back Terrell Smith. Uh, also out with a hip injury. Uh, so I, I mentioned all these guests we have on tonight's show. Tom, let, let's kick it off with my sit-down with a Bears president and CEO, Kevin Warren, on this visit to London and more. Your own vision mm-hmm. uh, with a fr- from the franchise point of view, uh, how, how important is this on an international stage? It's critically important. I mean, to think about we have 4 million fans in Chicago, 15 million fans in the state of Illinois, 40 million fans <laughs> worldwide. <laughs> Someone told me this morning that we have the largest following of fans around the world for a U.S. sports uh, franchise in any sport. And But you think 40 million mm. fans, and I'm always thinking about what can we do, because you've heard me say it before, I look at our fans from 10 months old to 110 years old. Mm-hmm. And there will be fans that were not Chicago Bears fans a week ago, but after spending time here and going back home, we'll have new fans. And I love the fact of the younger demographics, even just coming here today to spend time with you, seeing NFL gear in mm-hmm. downtown London, which is really you know, special. And then it allows us to have many monsters clinics and girls flag football and uh, even this, this collaboration between Asset FC and Mitchell and Ness. 
all those different kind of things. The NFL is a global business, and the Chicago Bears are beloved around the world. Yeah, and not just London. I know there's marketing deals right. with Spain and, right. and England, but th does it align with an NFL perspective mm -hmm. for the Bears in terms of what you would like to get yes. out of the European situation? Yes. I mean, I think we, we have to look at this uh, from a global standpoint. We're one of the founding franchises in the National Football League, and, and that's why I wear this George uh, Hallis pin. You know, he was an innovator. And I even asked myself this morning during my quiet prayer time, would, what would George Hallis feel about playing internationally? And I think he'd be all for it, you know, because it's the growth of the game. I mean, you look at the, the way that he helped other owners and other franchises and, you know, to make the league stronger. And the international games make the league, you know, stronger, brings people together. And uh, last time I was here um, walking into the stadium, I, I, I challenged myself to see if I could find all how many jerseys I could find. And before I walked in, it was all 32. And I was able to see. <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah, that's what yeah, happens that's here. what happens. And so to be able to grow, th I mean, see the growth. I watched the game last week, the morning, mm -hmm. after my workout last uh, week before our game. And just the fandom associated with it. But to be able to bring our staff. And I'm always about the education part. Mm -hmm. You know, even some of our players on our team, for them to be able to travel a abroad, yeah. to be able to come here and uh, um, well, some have never yeah, traveled. Some have never traveled. So, this is, first time. so this, is yeah. first time. this is the first. So this is the first time, and we'll have Staley here with us. But but to see <laughs> our players kind of grow, and I just think you know one of my goals, even when I came here to the Bears, was to do all we can do to shrink the world and to wait, make the world smaller. And when you take trips like this, you realize that you know people are people. You know they love sports. The world is small. There's goodness in everyone, and there's great opportunity around the world. And the, as an attraction to certain players. Yes. And this is where I'm coming from, covering so many Super Bowls in my mm -hmm. life, almost 30 of them. This has a Super Bowl setting yes. feel, right. okay, the news conferences. Yep. And that is good for your players yes. to say, hey, this is what it's going to be like when. Yes, it's, Don't you it's agree? good. It's good. And even this setting here, I mean, anytime also you can create that training camp atmosphere yeah. to be here in this beautiful, you know, uh, location uh, for players to spend time together. Uh, is, is great. Like you said, it has a different feel. This doesn't mm -hmm. seem like a regular no. season game. This has something, and even the travel and, and uh, associated with it. And when you think about the tradition, I mean, if you have to think about two locales um, and also organizations that are similar, is you think about London and the Chicago Bears, just the history and the tradition to go back. I um, mean, this franchise is 105 years old and, and how it imp has impacted the National Football League Think about Miss McCaskey will be 102 years old in January. Mm -hmm. And then and when, you know, even driving in yesterday and looking at Parliament and Big Ben and and um, the Tower of London and and, you know, the River Thames, you know, passing that and all those different things. And, and then, like I said, I, I've always loved to read. I've always loved to travel. Didn't get a chance to do it as a kid. Yeah. And now a lot of these books that I was able to, to read as a kid to be able to come back. Um, we love London. I've been blessed to come here with my wife Greta to Wimbledon and travel here uh, many times before. So it always is very comfortable, you know, coming here and, and just have some incredible experiences. And knowing you, uh, mm -hmm. you're noting the architecture, yep. as you mentioned, because you always have these visions, yep. right? So uh, this is a, a major metropolitan city mm -hmm. that uh, we're playing in, in central London, uh, the different stadiums. Yep. And, you know, you were asked at the news conference earlier about the stadium situation, and I look at it as a stoplight. Right now, it's green light go, right, right. until somebody no, tells you no. Right, right, and that's the key. I mean, you have to plan ahead, and I get so many ideas here. I mean, we were here last year uh, for a conference and went, went over to, to Tottenham, and and you look at Tottenham. I mean, there are people living literally right. across the street. It's a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. <laughs> and so when you start thinking about, you know, some individuals in Chicago will raise um, you know, the museum campus that is, is so crowded and congested. And I'm mm. thinking to have, if, if you took some individuals here from London and said, here's the footprint, you got some great <laughs> museums, you have the most beautiful lake that is near downtown, and you have Northerly Island and this different green space, and to be able to put a stadium in there, they would look and say, really? I mean, this is, this is a challenge. Uh, it's beautiful. And so what I'm trying to do is to, for us to figure out a way that it becomes a win-win-win opportunity for everyone involved. But you're right. I love architecture. Uh, but to see it integrated here, to see all the history and tradition is really special. And again, even driving in from the airport yesterday to the city, cranes are in the air everywhere. Yeah. And I say it Notice all the time here. I mean, to think that 
We only have a handful of cranes, you know, in Chicago, only two north of the river. But when you see it here, um, that tells you that there's growth. And even for a city like this that's been around, mm -hmm. is that you need to grow and build to keep that vibrancy going. Green light go. Yeah. Lastly, uh, the team and its mm -hmm. personality yep. also fits this setting. Yep. We have a bunch of guys now that uh, are able to express themselves in a manner maybe yep. that they didn't in the past. Yep. Uh, and I think of Caleb right off the gate. Right. You can't think of a more international figure yep. who can attract international audiences than a man at 22 who stands before you like the CEO of a football right. team, right. right? As he as he handles himself with great, great uh, character yep. and personality. Would you agree? Yes, 100%. I mean, p part of, you know, the, 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 the NFL pro sports in the large is, one, you got to have great players. You have to have great coaches. You have to have great, you know, leaders who put these organizations together uh, from an operations, football operations standpoint. And so the thing that I'm excited about is we have personalities on our team who are incredibly talented. And that's why all the elements, that's why I'm, I'm so excited about the future. We have all the elements in, in place. You know, we have that, you know, that real maturity, that experience of Mercedes yeah. Lewis, you know, to Caleb and having Rome. We, I mean, look at the number of young, you know, players and, um, to see that come together and you love having that personality, they all have a common goal. They want to win, um, but they're all different, you know, which is what you want. The thing I really like about it is that they enjoy each other. Yeah. Just watching them on our road trips, even around the building, people in our organization, whether it's staff, whether it's coaches, whether our players, uh, they enjoy being around each other. And so when I say that I have great love for George McCaskey and the McCaskey family and Ryan and Coach Eberflus and even our players, like we really mean it. I have great love for you. And, and yeah, I, I appreciate you, that. No, no, what I'm saying, <laughs> to spend time because you know what? To accomplish greatness, one, you got to respect people and you got to love people because the time that it takes and to go that extra mile is really about love, respect, and admiration. We have it in this organization. So the key for us is going to be stay healthy, to keep believing. Uh, to put in the work and uh, and just set standards so that yep. we want to be exceptional, not only on the football field, in the organization, in the stadium pursuit, and that we need to we, we need to understand what the Chicago Bears are about. And that's history, tradition, innovation, um, winning, and uh, culture, and to realize that we're a founding franchise. So I'm excited. I'm, I, I am so blessed every single day to be associated with this organization. And to be here in London to pull all this together with culture, tradition, the Bears, London, food, Tottenham, our players, um, is really spectacular. Can you think of anybody more positive about an outlook on all things? No. I mean, he's got so much on his plate as the leader of the Chicago Bears from a presidential standpoint. And, you know, Kevin is, uh, has experience from everything he's done throughout his sports career throughout his educational opportunities that he's had, he's just gotten better along the way. And I don't think there's anything that ever surprises him, and he's got a great answer for everything that's asked of him. All right, coming up next, our visit with Bears linebacker Tremaine Edmonds. It's all coming up next on Bears Weekly on ESPN 1000 of the Bears Radio Network. This is Bears Weekly with the voice of the Bears for 24 years, Jeff Jonia, Jeff Jonia. on the Bears Radio Network. This segment of Bears Weekly is brought to you by IGS Energy with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. Uh, okay, we're going to listen in to Tremaine Edmonds here real quick. Uh, I'll sit down. That You'll also hear and see on Bears Game Day Live from London on Sunday morning on Fox. Uh, what's impressed you about Tremaine here in his year plus with the team? Uh, very good spokesman for this team. You know, he never gave unrealistic expectations. From a veteran leadership, he understood things were going to take time. Whether it's the development of the relationship between he and TJ Edwards and then the relationship of the defense, how they all play together. So I'm excited for what Tremaine, Tremaine has been able to do, how he's been able to develop within the Bears organization. And like we mentioned when we talked to him a couple weeks ago, he was drafted by the Bills high to be a building block of that defense, and he was brought here as a free agent to the Chicago Bears to be a building block of this defense and this entire team, and he stepped up to the plate and everything that's asked of him. Yeah, including advancing the Bears' trip to London over the summer with his mom to get a glimpse of Tottenham, and we discussed that and more. Yeah, um, it was amazing. I was able to come out with my mom. Uh, we did a big tour around the city. It took us to a lot of important places out here. 
Um, I was able to go to the huddle project. You know, they did, I did some interaction with some kids. They were doing like a physical activity in there and, you know, they wanted me to jump in. And it looked easy from the side, but when I got in there, I was like, hold on, I got to really think about this a little bit. And, you know, the kids was, you know, they got it quickly, but it took me a couple of times to get it. But I had a lot of fun, man. And, you know, we toured the stadium. I was able to see, you know, where we were playing, you know, prior to everybody else and we were playing that, but I didn't know who we were playing yet. But um, just the whole experience of being out here, I mean, from the culture to the food, um, just going around touring the city and, you know, just seeing everything London had to offer. You know, this is my first, that was my first time out here. And um, to be able to experience with my mom, I mean, that was definitely, you know, a dream come true. And she got a kick out of it, for nah, sure. Nah, she definitely got a yeah. kick out of it, man. She was taking pictures everywhere. She was asking all the questions she wanted to ask. But, you know, just to be able to put a smile on her face, man, that's what we do, the things what we do for, you know what I mean? And for the people that we love, you know what I mean? Yeah, for yeah. them to experience it with us makes life 10 times better. You know what I mean? Obviously, I can experience it myself. But to be able to bring somebody like my mom along, you know, obviously, that's why we play the game, man. NFL ready locker room too. I think nah, you most, liked it. I think nah, most definitely. I'm yeah. telling you, that locker room was amazing. Like I walked in there, I was like, man, like this is like a like a real professional locker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a football yeah. locker room. Right, Obviously, right. it's a soccer stadium, but I mean, it was big. It was spacious. It had everything that you wanted. You know what I mean? So I was very surprised when I went in there. I mean, not just the the locker room, but just the whole facility. I mean, you can see like it's very professional. You know what I mean? From they had like a whole F1 racing thing on the inside. Right. Talk about that because yeah. you were trying to get a handle on it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm telling you, I kind of lost control a couple of times. I was like, man, this is kind of, it was new to me, you know what I mean? So I had to go around a lap one time. But when I went around one lap, I kind of got settled in, you know what I mean? I started hawking a couple of cars, but it was a lot of fun, man. I had a lot of fun. That's the athlete in you, see? Now, most you adapt and you adjust. That's the name of the game. Right, That's right, the name because... Of the game. Uh, those F1 folks, they're athletic too nah, now. Most definitely. Even though most they're definitely. sitting behind the wheel, the reaction time, most all that. Don't you think now, you have will, respect for that? I have a ton of respect for it. And I will say I was in a simulator, so I didn't get, I the, understand. I didn't get the whole <laughs> F1 experience, but the simulator was tough enough, so I can only imagine how it is really out there on that track. Do you appreciate the, the passion, though, of this country and, and Europe in general for football, their, their version of football? Their uh, soccer athletes are you know, put on a pedestal just like professional athletes in America. And uh, I think that's a common language you guys all share, right? Most definitely. I have a ton of respect for it. I think anytime, you know, you take an individual or just a country in general that have love and admiration for their sport, have love and admiration for things that's going on in a positive way, um, you have to, you know, obviously appreciate that. You know what I mean? Obviously, in the U.S., football is big. You know what I mean? Here in Here in Europe, you know, obviously soccer is big. So, just seeing the love they have for soccer and now that they're open to, you know, bringing football into their country and, you know, showing the love that they show us. And, um, you know, just based, even when I watch it on TV, just seeing all the fans that's at the game, you know, the different jerseys that they wear, you can you can tell that they, you know, they're aware of what's going on in the U.S. as far as on the NFL side, as far as the football side. So just being able to come here and, you know, get that same love that we get in the U.S., man, it means a lot, you know, to be able to continue to make football global, man. And, you know, be able to tap into each country. Uh, it means a lot. Like I said, this is my first international game, man. So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to take in the whole experience. I'm excited to experience it with my brothers, with my family. So it'll be a good one. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a big ask, honestly, yeah, right, definitely. for NFL players most because definitely. the routine of it changes. But it does have a Super Bowl feel, like what you guys will expect when you get to a Super Bowl. And it's the whole week, the buildup, the interviews, the, the press conferences, stuff like this. Um, I, I think this team has the personality and the, the type of uh, image that does reflect a team that could handle that kind of attention. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, we have a lot of great guys, you know, from the vets, even to the young guys. You yeah. know what I mean? I think. I mean, look at Caleb's. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Right? That's what I'm saying. And, you know, I remember a guy like myself, you know, a long time ago. <laughs> You know, just having to do stuff like that. And I can just, that's why I have admiration for it because I know, you know, the, the challenge it, it, it may present. You know, if you have a good game, if you have a bad game, I understand you have to be the same guy. And, you know, we have a great group. We have guys that lead from the front, guys that lead from the inside. And that's all you can ask for, you know what I mean? Because NFL is, you're going to face adversity. That's just what life of the NFL. And, um, you know, I think we have a good nucleus of guys that, you know, when, when, when times are bad, they can get out front, lead the team. And, you know, make sure guys are, you know, obviously head down and working 100 percent of the time because, you know, that's life in the league. You know, things are not going to always go your way. But like we just talked about, you got to be able to adapt, you know what I mean? And that's life for the league. But, you know, just being able to have guys, you know, with personalities, um, not 
not so much egos because we always check our egos at the mm-hmm. door, as we always talk about, but guys with personalities to, you know, let that true personality Charisma. out. Charisma. Charisma, yeah, and let that true personality out so people can really, you know, accept them for who they are. And um, I think that's the dynamic, you know, part about this team. You know what I mean? That's what guys appreciate the most about everybody, you know, being able to, you know, come as their self and, you know, being, being able to be accepted for who they are. And, and the big thing about that is nothing then becomes too big for a football team. Because you guys have already, you got the number one pick, you know, in Caleb Williams and all the attention that comes with that. You had the Hall of Fame experience in Devin Hester. Uh, you got this Europe experience here in, in, in London. Uh, so you guys have been kind of the center of the football universe a little bit here this year. Do you think that helps as you guys grow and you guys are playing well too? That's another part of it because the national attention's coming. No, nah, most definitely. You know, I've always thought of it as, you know what I mean, experience is the number one teacher. You know, anytime mm-hmm. that you can experience something early, whether it's good, whether it's bad, it's always a lesson. You know, never a loss is always a lesson. So um, I think just from the, the media, you know, the national attention, you know, I think we have a group, group of guys that know how to deal with that type of stuff. You know, even the young guys, you know what I mean? You talk about a quarterback that was drafted number one overall. You think he didn't get attention in college? You know what I mean? So being able to, to deal with that attention and know the right way to go about it, um, you know, I think that's also going to be good, you know, for the other young guys that may have didn't receive as much attention as Caleb did. You know what I mean? All that stuff is good. But, you know, being able to go through the things that we went through, um, you know, it, that's it didn't just start this year. You know no. what I mean? Like we have a gr- we have a lot of guys that was on the team last year as well. And, you know, we also went through some adversity. We was able to overcome some things. But, you know, that's what brings us to the point where we at now. Like we're so close. Um, you know, we all have accountability towards one another, you know. I think we have a group of guys that don't want to let their brother down. That's when you that's that's what makes up a dynamic football team. That's what makes up a, a great football team. You know what I mean? You plan for one another. Um, you can look each other in the eye and tell each other the truth because that's what it comes down to. This is grown man. You yep. know what I mean? So if I can look at my brother in the face and say, you know what, I might have messed up that play, man. I got you on the next one. That's what it's all about. Like nobody's making excuses. Everybody has their head down and working, man. We know we know what the end goal looks like. Your defense. Uh... Just playing with his hair on fire right now. I mean, there's some things, obviously, that you're always going to have to work on, but how impressed at how you guys have all banded together here as a group. And uh, from front to back, everybody's making plays. Yeah, I'm very impressed. impressed. Um, you know, I think one thing that we preach day in and day out um, is just hustle. You know what I mean? I think hustle takes, you know, it takes precedent of a lot of things. You know what I mean? Like when you have hustle, you start making interceptions, you start getting sacks, you start getting forced fumbles, you know, you got TFLs, you know what I mean? That's the number one thing in what we preach day in and day out is hustle. And, you know, obviously intensity, tackling, you know, all that type of stuff comes after that. But, you know, if you hustle, because that's something that you can't teach. You well, know look what at I mean? the Dexter play. Exactly. You know, recovering the fumble, ball's just sitting there, Brisker that's, gives the pop, the ball's just sitting there. It's hustle. Maybe th- people might have thought it was an incomplete pass. No, that's a, nah, that's a live ball. Nah, most definitely. But, um, I mean, that's something that we preach day in and day out. And, I think a lot of things that people don't really see is like how close we are as a unit mm-hmm. outside of football. You know what I mean? And that goes from hanging out, maybe going to the movies, just doing stuff. Maybe we go bowling, <laughs> um, go to somebody's house, watch Thursday night football, go to somebody's house, watch Monday night football. Um, it's a different guy each week. You know what I mean? Different guy wants to take the guys out. And I think that's when you have, you know, the respect from the other guys in the locker room. You know what I mean? Like, it's like I can count on this guy outside of work. You know what I mean? Like we actually have a relationship outside of being in the building every day. And, you know, I think that's what makes a special group. You know what I mean? I think a lot of teams that had special units, you know what I mean, whether it's offensive, defense side of the ball, can say it was a team camaraderie. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of people that I've talked to always remembers about the game. It's obviously you remember the plays that you make, but you remember the relationships. And, you know, the more that we can, you know, develop our relationships and strengthen our relationships, the stronger we'll be as a team. Well, you're one of the guys. Appreciate you're that. one of those dudes, right? Appreciate it, yes, sir. You feel, feel yeah. good how you're playing right now? You know, I think a point of emphasis for me is just making sure I'm leading, you know, the guys yeah. the best way that I can. Um, you know, as far as the plays, man, they're going to come. You know what I mean? As far as, you know, if as long as I'm doing my responsibility, putting myself in the best position to make a play, you know, I, it's, it's up to me to go out there and make that play. But, you know, the thing that I stress the most about is getting the guys lined up, making sure the guys know they can count on me, and making sure that I'm prepared to the, to the point that, you know, any checks out there, um, you know, anything that I have to do as far as from a scheme standpoint, the guys know, like, hey, I got you. You know what I mean? But, you know, a lot of that, obviously, I'm the mic, I make the calls, but I'm going to be honest, man, we have a great group of guys that I'm not out there alone. You know what no. I mean? And I know and I feel that 
And uh, that's the great thing about it, man. You know, I could talk to my brother, be like, hey, what did you see this play? He could tell me what he saw. I could tell him what I saw. You know what I mean? But it's a collective unit, you know what I mean, to make this thing special. Uh, it's not just coming from me. Uh, it's coming from a lot of guys. And I think that's the part that I appreciate the most about it. But, you know, as far as everything else, man, everything is is, 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 is great. It feels great. You know, I think that's the best part about the league is when you win in and you're making plays. But uh, I know a lot of guys felt that. So we off to a good start. Go get him. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy. Yes, Joking around with him a little bit and, uh, you know, talking about how he's playing and whatnot. Um, and we had a good laugh. We had to stop recording real quick because he goes, oh, you're trying to make this about me now. No, I'm a team guy. And, and he he means it. Like, yeah. he wants to talk about everybody but himself. Right. And that's what I was just saying about Tremaine. Everywhere he's been brought apart to be a, a part of the building block of a football team, that's what he's been. He's never been the top of the totem pole. He's always been part of the middle structure of a totem pole. And that's what I admire about him the most. He's got a great personality. He's a great teammate. And I think that he allows other people to flourish in their opportunities because he's willing to do whatever it takes for him to be a better player so his teammates can be better players coming up next bears chairman george hallis mccaskey on espn chicago and the bears radio network welcome back to bears weekly on the bears radio network here's your host the voice of the bears jeff Jolie. Calling all Bears fans. Want unforgettable access to see the Bears play at Soldier Field this season? Well, VIP official ticket package is now available for every home game. Unlock access to exclusive ticket packages that may include entry to in-stadium hospitality lounges, pregame sideline credentials, and the Chicago City Pass. Visit ChicagoBearsVIP.com or call 866-202-5755 for more info. Again, that's ChicagoBearsVIP.com or call 866-202-5755. Don't miss this exclusive opportunity with Chicago Bears VIP. Jeff and Tom back with you on Bears Weekly on ESPN 1000 of the Bears Radio Network. So I had to ask, George met the media uh, from Chicago for a short conversation about all things. Uh, but I also pulled him aside. I said, hey, you know, Tom wants everybody to know that the first Bears game in London was 1986. It was a preseason game, though. It wasn't a regular season game. So that's why I make the delineation with Tom. I remember that I wasn't invited to attend the game. <laughs> is this true? <laughs> this is oh, true. Oh, come on. No way. Boy, you've come a long way. Are you serious? I am serious. Um, and one, when one is not invited but would like to go, does one ask in your family to, hey, is there any chance I could join you guys? Uh, well, one uh, did not have the means to to just go off gallivanting. <laughs> so in other words, you are going to be paying your own way. <laughs> That's hilarious. The Mike McCaskey administration, oh, you paid your own oh, way. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> but that being said, that kind of kicked it all off because I think many people will go back and think about it. There are a lot of Bears fans now here because of that in 86. Yeah, including some 35 family members so <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of bears fans here um it's very gratifying to see um we have such great support at home such great fans and uh the bears are truly um a global sports brand i mean it's kind of mind-boggling when you think about it what's mind-boggling about it that fans of the other football uh, would embrace American football as they have. Um, I think they're still learning how it's played, even the playing rules, but I think they're excited by the spectacle. They see the athleticism, the beauty of the sport. It's catching on. I think it's more than catching on. <laughs> I mean, what? did you know that? I did not know that. Um, at, I was only worried about myself at that point and my own job. And I think when uh, we had a chance to load up the plane to come over here, it was new to every one of us on the plane. It was new to London, for, for that matter. So, And the fact of the matter is uh, it's it was the beginning of Bears fandom here. You know, I still think that the Bears were, will always have an indelible mark on the international games because it was the first one played, and we probably had the most popular team in the country at that point. You sure did. Let's listen in more with George on all aspects of what's going on with the franchise and beyond. Well, this is a chance for us to uh, touch our fans right here in the U.K. Like I said, we've been here before. Uh, we also have 
uh, global rights in Spain, and um, both markets have avid fans of American football and of the Bears, and this is our chance to uh, connect with them, show them what American football is all about, and hopefully come away with a W. George, how well have you gotten to know Caleb over the last six months or so when he's been around, and what do you think of just not his play necessarily, but just the personality and and the guy that you've brought into the building as one of the faces of the franchise? Well, especially when the season starts, I try to stay out of the players' way. You know, they've got things to do, and um, um, they're into each other. Um, but you've seen him. He's an irrepressible spirit, and um, if he wants to get to know you, you don't have a choice in the matter. So <laughs> um, it's been a lot of fun. He always says hello. He's always friendly, and um, he's fun to watch. Uh, I think it's gone very well. We wanted to have a structure in place for him to succeed, um, and a lot of that was... Um, I think protecting him from the inevitable distractions when you're the starting quarterback of the Chicago Bears, everybody wants some of your time. And um, unfortunately, uh, in order for him to do his job properly, he doesn't have time for everyone. So um, we have to protect him. We have to act as buffers. And I think we've got uh, a good support system in place for him. George, uh, Ted had a vision for a stadium in Arlington Heights. Kevin has one in Chicago. For you personally, especially having known Ted for so long, is that conflicting at all for you? Not at all. We want to um, go where the best deal is possible, where it's the most feasible financially, politically, geographically. And uh, the lakefront is an excellent site. And uh, we think that um, a roofed stadium just south of Soldier Field can be great for Chicago for the region and for the great state of Illinois. How do you, what's the next step in terms of Township securing public funding is still that next step? How, where Where do you think things are? Yeah, so there's a, a veto session in November, there's a lame duck session in January, and then the spring session right after that. So um, at some time in one of those sessions, we're going to have to have some sort of uh, enabling legislation to allow the project to move forward. Do you share? confidence level that you'll get a shovel in the ground next year? Yes, we're confident in Kevin. You, you at one point were happy with the idea of Arlington Heights and even leaving Chicago, you said you know, change isn't always a bad thing. Do you still feel that way if that becomes the option you guys own the property out there, will you be happy still if, there's a, if the stadium ends up being in Arlington Heights? Well, right now our focus is on the lakeshore and we'll be happy if a stadium is built just south of Soldier Field. Alright, so a healthy view from, from George on the Bears and what vision that uh, Kevin Warren has for this franchise as well with the stadium and uh, all other matters. Okay, uh, let's, let's listen in to Bears defensive coordinator Eric Washington, and he also has a pretty good scouting report on what's ahead against the Jacksonville Jaguars Sunday here in London. We're facing an offense this week that had an explosive performance last week, and it came uh, through the run, rushing attack. It came through the quarterback. It came through big plays. And so uh, they're getting themselves together at a good time for them, and we're going to have to make sure that we exceed their tempo. We exceed their tempo in terms of pacing, in terms of what we need to do to get ourselves lined up and get set and to execute. And we're excited about the challenge. It's great to be here in this particular game. And... Um, we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to the environment. Very respectful of the performance of Trevor Lawrence. Now, that, that, that's from a coaching perspective. After watching tape of Trevor Lawrence, and I don't know how, how deep you went into it beyond uh, the win over the Indianapolis Colts because he had been struggling quite a bit. Yeah, but listen, he's a dynamic player. The reason he's one of the better quarterbacks in the National Football League, even though he's had some issues with the Jacksonville Jaguars in a team performance, He's still a six six dynamic athlete that sees over the line of scrimmage, and he's got a big, strong arm. So if you think that you can relax on Trevor Lawrence just because he's suffering through some difficult times, that's when he'll come back to bite you the worst. And that's why I think Eric Washington talking about playing up to the speed and the intensity of the game and matching everything that Jacksonville Jaguars can offer you because, yeah, they are spearheaded by – 
a, a, a really good developing quarterback like Trevor Lawrence, but they got some other dynamic players that if you think that you can go to sleep on them or have a lackluster performance, they can put up 40 on you in a, in the course of a, a game. Yep. They run the ball. They got, they got receiving options, including Brian Thomas and a returning Evan Ingram. Um, I want to touch one thing about the timing of blitzes, and this, this is something we talked about with Matt Eberflus earlier in the week on Bears, et cetera, but you know, Eric was asked about, you know, what's the process in, in figuring out the timing of these blitzes that because they've been working very well. And he made clear the foundation is is rush with four and cover. The pressures will complement that, but they don't want to live in that space. And for good reason, but the, the speed and timing affect the game without a fifth guy to rush is important. And to disguise the matchups uh, for coverage uh, and anticipate the offensive plan and then if you're going to go to an eight-man front and you're going to blitz one of those or two of those guys, make sure you're very fast and violent about it. Right. You know, Jeff, a lot of this has to do with the exploratory surgery. And what I mean by that is the scouting department evaluating the performance of your opponents and see where their vulnerabilities lie. Is it in the academic part of it where they don't understand all their assignments, or is it the physical part of it where they have an offensive lineman or an offensive blocker that just isn't up against a one-on-one opportunity where it exposes a lane for another rusher? So there's a lot more that goes into it than just thinking about blitzing. You have to go in there and study your opponent and see what they're susceptible to. All right, coming up next, Bears offensive coordinator Shane Waldron and wide receiver coach Chris Beatty. It's all coming up next on ESPN 1000 and the Bears Radio Network. Welcome back to Bears Weekly on the Bears Radio Network. Here's your host, the voice of the Bears, Jeff Jolien. This segment of Bears Weekly is brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit athletico.com to request an in-clinic or a virtual appointment and start feeling better tomorrow. Jeff and Tom breaking down Bears and Jaguars. First of all, defensively, before we get into Shane Waldron's uh, view on things, where are you looking at right now with Jags? You know, it's, it's got to be the defensive front. It's got to be the defensive front seven or eight. Because when you talk about having changeover in the offensive line, possibly if we don't know if Tevin's going to play or not, they're going to do some ex- exploration themselves. They're going to see if they can put a designation of their type of pass rush to get the offensive line off balance that makes rushing lanes susceptible for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They have quality rushers on each offensive tackle, on each on the defensive end, so it's a tight end or a tackle. And they got um, linebackers, skills, and athletes that can, you know, are versatile. They can play strong against the run with that big defensive line in front of them, and they have pass coverage responsibilities. But to me, if I was getting ready to play the Bears, I would have to see how my in offensive line is playing together. And if you put a multiple people up at the line of scrimmage, do they understand their blocking responsibilities or does it confuse the quarterback? You know, one of the big uh, challenges uh, for a team that has very big name skill position players like the Bears do and guys that have really done a great job in their careers, you think no further than Keenan Allen and you heard DJ Moore and Cole Komet's been here and now you got a rookie first round pick uh, who in an ordinary situation without a number one overall choice of quarterback would be getting a ton of attention uh, and he'd have probably a lot more pressure on him. And Roma Dunze is the ninth overall pick in the draft. But uh, that's not the case. There's other people that are, are getting the attention. But the one ball, many weapons concept and the discussion has, has, is something that was talked about with Shane Waldron today with the media. Let's listen in. I think the uh, the challenge is always a fun challenge, right? Figuring out how to get everybody involved. We mentioned uh, you know different guys. We have so many guys that are uh, deserving of getting touches in the pass game, getting the ball in the run game. Uh, so finding that balance. Uh, so that's always going to be a challenge because we have such good people that you want to do right for them, right? Get them involved more. And so that's always going to be a challenge. But I think the the positive that's uh, come away that I've come away with from that is we have so many good people, good players that really care about each other. So if one guy maybe doesn't have a big play but his his buddy is you see everybody celebrating in the end zone you know looked at a couple examples from this past week where you see guys celebrating together uh really you know excited about what their teammates just did and that's that's such a big part of it so that alleviates any of that stress for me you know as you break down what he's talking about you know there are pressures of of guys wanting the football and how do you decipher that and the only way in my opinion is you just think about winning and however that looks Right? 
Key ingredient. Number one overall priority of any team sport that you look at you look at is winning. However, when you talk about the one football, you know, speak and you look at the athletes the Bears have, and again, it goes into exploring how are they going to cover you? Who are they going to determine as a number one receiver? Who are they going to try to take away from you? And then where is your alternate opportunities of success going to lie? Is it Rome? Is it Keenan? Is it Cole? Is it Gerald Everett? Is it DeAndre Swift? And that's a good problem to have. So I don't think that Caleb Williams is ever going to become one-dimensional and only rely on one receiver receiver for the success of the offense is what is the opponent's defense doing to you so your offense can be successful and that success in the deep passing game or the big shots also on the table here that's going to come together no question about it here's receivers coach Chris Beatty eventually those things will start hitting at some point you know and the game will slow down for Caleb so he can see those things before they happen so they're all kind of a process you know so um, but I'm, I'm excited about the guys getting open and being in the right spot and doing the right things and anytime you throw for 300 yards and feel like you could have thrown for a lot more that's a good thing so with Keenan obviously he's had so much success over the years are you confident that he's just sitting there going it'll come or or do all the greats get a little impatient um I think it's a little bit of both I think you always get impatient I think every receiver gets impatient um but at the same time he knows he's open you know so he knows eventually the ball will find him um it's just a process to get there so at the end of the day, it's, you know, you, it's a little bit of impatience, but also a little bit of, hey, I know it's going to come. Just keep doing what I do. Is that also a good problem to have when, you know, you're big, you know a receiver with his pedigree hasn't broken out yet, but your offense is still doing yeah. pretty well? Yeah, yeah no, nah, um, I mean, we got a lot of good players on offense. So at the end of the day, the ball's going to get dispersed. So you might not put up the same numbers that he used to um, and still be just as effective. So. You know, for for us right now, it's about making the quarterback comfortable, making sure that he can see the things, and us being in the right spot for him. And then eventually, those things will start translating into bigger numbers. How much of a bad it for like, hey Caleb, you need to get this guy involved, that guy involved, so he's happy versus just winning the game. Uh, it's none of that getting anybody involved right now. It's you know, I think you know the game's got to slow down for the quarterback before you start saying, hey, let's. Right now, let's feature these certain people. It's like, hey, let's make sure we're in the right spots so that he can go through his progression. And then eventually, you know, those things kind of even themselves out as far as production and those things. But right now, like, it's about us being in the right spot and making the game as easy as we can for the quarterback. Yes, I I truly believe that they're within a whisker of of being uh, a team that has a higher percentage of connecting on those deep balls. Would you agree? 100%. I mean, you have to look at this takes a lot of for the offense to understand as a unit. You have to understand the protections, the length of the routes, the land, the whereabouts of the conclusion of every route. You have to understand the differences in your offense in the red zone or at short yardage goal line on first down to third down. So there's so many building blocks to a successful offense, and you hopefully all the pieces are in place for a number of years so you have those constant reps that, you know, that repetitiously done in offensive football. That's how you improve, and that's what the Bears need to do with a rookie quarterback and experience at receiver. One more segment to go. We'll listen in to Richard Hightower on a, a particular Bear who happens to be one of my favorite players on this football team. A little tease there for you. It's all coming up next on Bears Weekly on ESPN 1000 of the Bears Radio Network. This is Bears Weekly with the voice of the Bears for 24 years, Jeff Jonia. Jeff Jonia on the Bears Radio Network. This segment of Bears Weekly is brought to you by CDW. People to get it. Our final moments with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. As the Bears get ready to meet the Jaguars in London, first of all, uh, how would you describe your London experience so far? I loved it. It's been a totally new experience to me. This is my seventh international trip, and every time we've been here, we stayed inside the city limits where you could walk out your hotel and be in the midst of millions of people. This time we're out in the country. We've seen nobody. This is more of a training camp atmosphere. I think the the Bears, given the time change, will be physically fresh and ready to play on Sunday, and that's the one thing I'm most encouraged Uh, about. Mentally too, right? Exactly. I th- I think mentally is the type of challenge that will, you know, be part of your journey every single day of your NFL career. But when you come over here and you go through this time change, you got to make sure your body is ready to go 
and physically excited about being on the football field at kickoff. Well, I admire the science department of the Chicago Bears because they've mm-hmm. done everything from the minute you walked on the – really, yeah, really, from Sunday schedule to the minute you walked on the plane on Monday, they had every sp- – minutes specifically designed how you're going to make yourself more efficiently prepared for Sunday. Right, and a shout out to Kyle Kelly and uh, his group that uh, planned this whole thing. They did an unbelievable job throughout the course of the week. There's many people to thank, and I know coaches have thanked a lot of folks as well, but uh, way to go. When you have one organization spread between three hotels and they're as organized as they are, yeah, Kyle Kelly and his whole crew have done a tremendous job. All right, let's uh, get to one of my favorite players, Josh Blackwell. Josh Blackwell, uh, backup nickel, uh, debuted as a kick returner a week ago, but also a very, very good special teams player. He is their first to arrive on almost every single kick or punt return. His special teams coordinator, Richard Hightower, also is fond of the young man. Yeah, I like Blackwell. He did a, he did a nice job back there. Uh, you know, it, it, he, he can't ever – Blackwell never ceases to amaze me. You know, the tackle he made in the game as well, um, that was a phenomenal tackle, good return by him, and uh, we're just looking to keep growing his game. Um, I know he's excited about being over here. He actually sat in the, the seat right in front of me uh, on the plane. So we, we talked quite a bit, and he was excited as heck saying – you know, NFL football has been good to us, man. I've never been over here. Like, I never, I'm just, he was giddy. Like, he was like almost teary eyed that he got a chance to play. So, that that's how much that kid loves the game. So, um, yeah, he's, you know, I love Blackwell. <laughs> Who'd you think I was going to say? I thought you were going to say Tory Taylor. I thought he became your new favorite. I saw a 19 jersey it packed in your bag on the way to London. But no. Blackwell, Josh Blackwell, is an amazing special teams player. And we've had a couple here uh, for the Bears over our period of time. And then there's been some in the league that you have that equal admiration for as if they are the everyday, every play middle linebacker. But Josh Blackwell has such a positive approach to his performance on special teams It's kind of uh, contagious to the rest of the guys in there to realize your role on special teams is just as important as any role on this team. Yeah, the guys that pop into my mind, Brendan Iamadejo, Sherrick McManus, uh, right out of the gate. But, you know, there's many others. We've we've had very, very good special teams players here and not just the guys returning the football. Yeah, because it's never a forgotten element of the success of a football team. The special teams, the special teams coordinator plays an equal role in the team development because there's a lot of these guys that they have to play good on special teams, but like you see this week, your number might be called to be an every down player. Right. And uh, really good special teams unit for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, both place kicker, rookie at 21 years yeah. of age, punter, Logan Cook. He is a very good player, also a threat to throw the football. And then their, their long snapper is a pro bowler. So lot, lots of great stuff to, to watch on Sunday uh, here in London. We'll bring it to you starting at 8.30 with our kickoff, the Bears and Jacksonville. And I uh, can't wait to see that one unfold at Tottenham. That's going to do it for us. Thanks to Bears chairman George Hallis mccaskey Bears president and CEO Kevin Warren, and linebacker Tremaine Edmonds, the executive producer of the Bears Radio Network, Eric Ostrowski. Thanks to our Bears producers, Dan Brilli and Jordan Treadup, in studio, Charlie Bevins. For Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been Bears Weekly on the new radio home of the Chicago Bears, ESPN Chicago. Coming up next, Game 4, Yankees and Royals on ESPN Chicago. Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Chicago Bears Network presentation of Bears Weekly. Hosted by the mayor of Bearsville, Jeff Joniak, and Surfmaster Tom Thayer. Podcasts are available on the Chicago Bears official app. Brought to you by Verizon and Apple Podcasts. Bears Weekly has been brought to you by Miller Lite.